funny that African American men only think that they can get true king treatment if they step outside of the United States. And I've had good relationships in my life, but I have never felt like a king or got true king treatment until I went out of this country. Where you're praised, especially as a black African American man, when I'm from America and two, I'm black. It's like the world is yours whenever you leave this country. Let me just say this, African American men think that women are beneath them. But they forget that how they treat people who are beneath them says a lot about their character. African American women are anxious to give African American men the king treatment because they rarely treat us like queens. The women in other countries, their men treat them with a high level of respect, love, and care. It doesn't make them better women because they have a better perspective about men where they come from. Just because you don't have to put forth all of this extreme effort with those women because they just flat out accept you because you're a man doesn't mean that they're better women. In their culture, their men treat them a hell of a lot better. So they tend to believe they automatically are assuming that you are going to be that kind of man as well. In America, we look at you with the side eye from the beginning. Rico, I am concerned about you, sweetheart, because you really have a warped definition of what women should be in your mind. And I don't know if it's because you had a bad relationship with your mother or your sister or maybe some chick in high school or middle school or whatever. I don't know what the case is, but you have to be a king in order for a woman to treat you like that. African American men have been indoctrinated by Caucasian American patriarchy and it promotes the oppression of women. Other people in other countries don't have that. Adopt the principles of kings from overseas and women will treat you like royalty, especially if you have the wealth to match. Not every man is a king or deserves to be treated like one. Same thing as women. We not all queens. I got a whole ass auntie that I just want to punch in the face. You know, she don't like me either, so. Yeah, that's just real. I know it's a lot of us that grew up in an environment where we couldn't necessarily trust the women that were around us. Whether it's our mothers, sisters, best friends, whatever. A lot of us have been, as women, in situations where we can't even trust the women that we are, you know, are surrounded by. And for a long time, it was difficult for me to relate to women or to have long-term friendships with women. I have some amazing female friends. They the bomb. When you're a woman, it's good for you to have other women in your life that inspire you, that are positive, that give you a good, you know, message, and that you actually connect with growing up. And even if you are like in college, you know, or a grown woman, like even with me being 42, I have friends from all over the country and the stuff that they share with me and the way they help me mold my life goodness. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't display a level of humility or love or even be grounded to some degree at all. A lot of women do not have a sister code. So it's very difficult for us to trust each other with our families, with our relationships, because we don't have a code. A lot of us do not understand camaraderie. Men have a lot of camaraderie and are very loyal to one another. Women, on the other hand, kind of struggle with that. Like y'all will give men chance after chance after chance after chance. But when it comes to your female friends, you ready to cut her off the second she breathe wrong. Like why do women allow abusive men, whether they abuse these women mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, whatever the case is. Why do women continuously allow these men to do this? And it's on some, oh, she should know better. She should know better. But your man don't. Men want us to believe they are superior to us. But when we're dealing with them, we treat them like they can't intellectually match us. Men are not stupid. A lot of them know exactly what they doing. So when these men are out here and they're doing dubious shit, I'm going to need for you to hold them accountable for that. And that's the main reason why a lot of men don't hold each other accountable because women don't. Most of these men are not wealthy. So this lady says to me, yo, your baby daddy has you living in a hotel. I would be afraid to tell people that. And I was like, I don't know why, because I use my life as a lesson to teach women to go out there and make their own money. Because not all men are providers. They are there to help you maintain a lifestyle that you have already created for yourself. They are not supposed to provide for you. Most of them don't even have what it takes. All of y'all out here wanting a wealthy man. Most of these men are not wealthy. So I posted that a woman said this to me on my Instagram and in comes a man inside of my comment section and he says, it's better that he had you in a hotel instead of under a bridge. The average man inside of the United States does not think he's doing himself a great disservice if he doesn't make $100,000 a year. Most of them think they can't make that amount of money. Most of them feel completely fine with not making that amount of money. And to me, that's crazy. 
their standards are low as hell ladies you want a luxury lifestyle i suggest you go out there and get it for yourself and it seems that all of us are starting to go out there and get it for ourselves because men don't want that they don't care about living a luxury lifestyle they're okay with living paycheck to paycheck they are okay with living simple lives these men argue me down about taking you out every weekend for free told me it was unrealistic for a woman to expect a man to take her out every weekend like going out to get fresh air four times a month is just not something feasible these men want to sit in the house and netflix and chills so i suggest you do what you need to do to get your money together so you can do the things that you want to do with your life and forget even dating them then when you out doing something amazing with your life maybe you'll run into a man who loves those things too I work my ass off for some bread. Believe me, sweetie, I got enough to feed the needs. Here's what would help a lot of men dealing with women. Get a better workout regimen. Have a cleaner diet. Go see a mental health professional. Go get your education. Go get you a spa day. Get your manicures and your pedicures. Go to the barbershop, get your hair cut. Go get four different bottles of cologne. And I don't mean that cheap shit. Brush your damn teeth. Get your credit score together. Get you a decent car. Not a luxury car, a decent car. Not that, oh, look at me, oh, look at me type of shit. Maybe something like an Acura, an Infiniti. You can get you a nice Honda Civic. Because them joints be looking proper. Get you a nice Camry or a Lexus or something. If you're not ready for home ownership because your credit ain't looking right, at least have your own apartment and keep your damn apartment clean. Learn how to cook get rid of all of that slang y'all be using all of the time that locker room talk and that harsh speech y'all have don't do that in front of women departmentalize and you behave like that around your homeboys not around women open doors for women if a chick catch a nasty attitude with you send that bitch a packing don't argue back with that shit one thing i can truly say about going through heartbreak is it's never something that you forget it's never something that you stop feeling you just learn how to live with it it's like you're holding a place in your heart for pain it's just that you compartmentalize that pain and learn to live with it some scars run deeper than others some bones break permanently when we talk about mental and emotional or spiritual health a lot of people believe that those things aren't things that they need to be working on, but if you don't focus on wellness, you are inviting in illness, still mental, emotional, or spiritual injury. Just because it's not a physical ailment doesn't mean it isn't as harmful. The amazing part about being over 40 for me is seeing the men my age admit how much they used to be players. I mean, even men, once they hit 30, some of them are starting to admit how many games they fucking played, how many women they hurt, how many times they got buyer's remorse once they did get with a woman, how many of them didn't have feelings for a woman at all and made her think that. When you are being there for someone but abandoning yourself, you have developed an addiction. Listen, you cannot save someone from their own suffering even though you have an urge or addiction to do so. You can support someone, but save them, no. Inspire them, encourage them, help them improve, but at the end of the day, they have to make a conscious decision within themselves in order to improve as an individual. You cannot make them be a better person. They gotta wanna put forth their energy as well. So if you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing and it's getting to a point where you are now being drained, like you are draining yourself to the point of exhaustion, this is an addiction to you. Addictions are not good for you and they never will be. Yeah, everybody got their vices. Yeah, we got our guilty pleasures. But those addictions, they destroy us. Becoming her. Becoming that woman that you want to be. Finding your true identity. So I want to be happily married. I want to travel more. Write down the characteristics of the version of that woman. Then write down how that version of yourself would feel if she was happily married. And she traveled more. Then write down the steps one two and three of you becoming her you will become her in no time i used to have really bad nightmares um and i felt like ministering was no longer suitable for me um i didn't feel like i was the type of person that could reach enough people if i attached a religion to me I felt like I could reach more people 
if I was just a person who was motivationally speaking. Like Christianity only felt right to a certain degree. And after studying theology in college and after digging deep into religion and just knowing what I know about Christianity and the origins of it, it just was like, you know what? I have much respect for Jesus, but there are other religions out there. And it's so many people believe that their religion is the right religion. What feels better to me is Buddhism.